If you could please make her welcome, she's the Global Executive Editor of National Geographic, Caitlin Yarnell. What a great event and an even better crowd. I'm thrilled to be here with you all tonight. And I want to take you quickly, this is going to be a whirlwind journey, around the world on the planet we call home. We're going to see some of the biggest issues that we're facing. And I want to tell you about some solutions that I think are ripe for the picking. Who grew up in a place like this? Anyone? Yeah? Well, as you know, over half the planet now lives in urban settings. They may look like this American scene, or more like this Indian one. The planet is becoming more crowded and urban by the day. I want you to take a look at this graphic. It's called a cartogram. Countries are sized by their populations, with each dot representing two million people. Reds are the fastest growing, blues are the slowest a different look at, at the world than we're used to seeing. But as we know, raw numbers of people or growth rates are not defining the issues of today. We need to look at the consumption of resources. This cartogram shows the consumption of these resources per capita. Again, red is fast growing, blue is the slowest. Different picture, right? So what are these resources we're extracting? Well, fossil fuels are some of them. This is an oil field in California. And it's not just that we're extracting these resources that are key to many parts of our modern life, but we're also creating great waste, much of which is eventually shipped to developing countries for disposal. This is a shipbreaking yard in Bangladesh. And the demand on our global food system is greater than ever. We're cultivating more and more surface area of our planet as you see here in Spain. And it's not just that we're growing more food or clearing more fields, it's that we're eating higher up on the food chain. So grains are being used increasingly less for human consumption and more for animal feed to produce more meat for the fastest growing populations on the planet. Remember that first cartogram? That's where a lot of this meat is going. And more protein for the world, for much of the world, is a very good thing but it can also lead to scenes like this one. And once we lose forests, it's very hard to get them back. So this is a scary picture I'm painting. And at National Geographic, we like to talk a lot about balancing wonder and worry. And I believe that I've got some wonder for you. I believe we're on the cusp of change. We're on the cusp of a food revolution. So it's what I've been working on for the past three years, and it's been incredible. Agriculture is the biggest thing we do. We feed over 7 billion people a day, some too much, some too little. Very few of us eat exactly what we should. We've used all of our collective planetary resources to develop systems and factories and supply chains to move calories in the form of plants and animals around the planet. It's our biggest system, and it's vulnerable. And you know, it's easy to think about big agriculture on a global scale in terms of distribution and calories, but we must remember that people bring us our food every day. These are the farmers who have their hands in the dirt and grow us our meals. When we think about mindfulness, we should also be mindful about those who bring us our food. They are the unsung heroes of the global food system, and statistically, they're the majority of the planet. They're from Bali. Peru, the Ukraine, don't you just love her? She's my favorite. Bangladesh, and many more countries. These portraits are, are done by Jim Richardson. He's been working for 30 years with us to document the faces of agriculture. And he worked for over a year on this series, and it's, working with him on this project has been one of the highlights of my career. And often you hear that we need to grow more food, which is true. But what instead if we shifted the dialogue and we talked about growing more farmers? People who deeply understand what it takes to produce the food we eat. They're the best stewards of our land and soil and water because they understand what it takes to keep it healthy. So how can we help farmers? 
How can we feed nine billion people? Is there a solution? Don't worry, I have a plan. It's a five-step plan to feed the world. So instead of listening to me, I'm going to show you a video that walks you through the solutions. one of the best visual teams on the planet. Um, so I want to tell you through those solutions that we just saw there. So there's five steps, like I said, and this was developed with a friend of mine, um, Dr. Jonathan Foley, and uh, some of these changes must be made by governments, but many we can start making ourselves on a very personal level. So step one, we're going to freeze agriculture's footprint. What does that mean? We need to grow more on the farms we've got, and there's way to, ways to do this healthfully, sustainably. We need to do that by using our resources more efficiently, to shift our diets lower down on the food chain, and we need to reduce waste, both on a food loss side at the production level and then on a consumer and retail side. Simple enough, right? And we do have models for success. Often it means going back to the past. Models that must be specific to places, cultures, and ecosystems. Is, this is a village in Greenland, or this town in Tajikistan. I've talked a lot about food through the lens of calories or billions of mouths to feed, but we sh must remember that food is also culture. It binds us together. It is joyful and celebratory, and it is deeply personal. So these are going to be the worst photos I show you tonight, but they're the most touching and, and, and important to me, because they're personal. And above all, you know, food is something that we encounter three, probably more than three times a day. And it's photogenic. We put it on Instagram and Snapchat and Vine and whatever else will come out in the next six minutes that I'm talking. And sometimes we even show photos of ourselves on a large screen to thousands of people eating food. So I urge you all to be more mindful every time you share a photo? What resource, resources go into the food you're eating, preparing, and sharing? How was it grown? What hands touched it? What did those farmers experience as they were growing that food for you? You'll be surprised how this simple act of mindfulness can really change your actions. And collectively, we can change our food system in the world. Thanks for allowing me to be here. You all are truly inspiring. <laughs>